table 4-1, scapula. So our scapula has a lot of names that are directional term references. So even just knowing that, that is really important. I'm going to go a little out of order of the lab book, but just to give you some identifiers here. First, we have the spine. And since spine is a very generic term, this is going to be spine of the scapula. But our spine leads right into our acromion process. So if you remember in our clavicle, we had a chromial end. This is our acromion or acromion process. Either one is acceptable. So this, because that's the spine, and we can feel that on our shoulder blade. This is what the bone that you guys would term your shoulder blade, but you can feel it on the back of your shoulder sticking out. This spine has to face posterior. Um, otherwise, it would really cause some havoc trying to glide across our rib cage. So this would be posterior, and then this circle right here is called our glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa. This is where the head of the humerus is gonna articulate. So this has to be facing lateral so that the arm can come out on the outside. So by knowing that this is lateral and this is posterior, we're given a lot of guidance here. So the first thing is the superior border. Um, so our superior, this is gonna be top and this is gonna be bottom here. So our glenoid is more superior. So our superior border is going to be this ridge line right here that's on top. And right next to it, we have this notch, which is the suprascapular notch, which is above the scapula or on top of it. Here we have this notch. Now the medial or vertebral border is going to be right here. So it is medial facing in towards the body or vertebral, meaning it's going towards the vertebrae. So either is acceptable. And since we know our arms come out of that glenoid cavity here, this has to be our lateral border or also called our axillary border, which axillary, if you remember, is our fancy word for armpit region. So this would definitely face that side. Now we have angles, which are sharp points. So here is our superior angle. And then at the bottom, we have our inferior angle. And as I showed you before, so here's our spine of the scapula, which leads right into the acromion. And then this guy coming off of the glenoid is our coracoid process. Back here, let me show you. So that's him, that's him. And from the front, you can kind of see him. So that's our coracoid process. And then supraspinous fossa. So if you remember, we're gonna look above the spine, we're gonna have a groove. So supra above the spine, here is our supraspinous fossa. And then below the spine, here is our infraspinous fossa. And then on the back side, sub or below or beneath, this is our subscapular fossa. And then glenoid cavity or fossa I showed you is that round where the arms come out. And then above that, we have the supraglenoid tubercle, which on the plastics, this isn't very um, visible but you would have a very distinct bump right there, but better we can see is the infraglenoid tubercle. So this is a bump coming below the scapula.